Chill out. I am on the line with the world's famous Salmonetti source. How are you doing, sir? Doing well, doing well. Not doing as good as the Yankees. Oh, man, where do you see the Yankees? Do you see the Yankees having that first wild card spot, or is the Oakland Athletics about to uh, take it? I hope so, but, I mean, if you if you never looked at the standings and you just went ahead and watched the Yankees play, you would think that they're so lackadaisical and relaxed that they're 10 games in first. And, I mean, the way they're being managed, um, I as everybody knows, I haven't knocked Boone really all year. But, I mean, over the, the crunch time. He looks like he's just, run out of gas, to be honest with you, with uh... – it it almost it almost well that's what I'm saying I mean that that's that's the feel of the club yeah. I mean the feel of the club is that they're ten games in first and there's no there's no concern that they're fine everything's okay and I don't think that works with a team this young I just don't think it's okay. I mean you're watching what they're doing with him it, it, the Yankees and I just made a video um uh, not that long ago I was about to I was about to put it up but I'm not even gonna do it now because we have this so I'll talk about it here yeah. But just the idea that that the Yankees are not playing these games like they're playoff games is beyond me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. The idea that you go to a guy like Loa Siga, who hasn't pitched in, in multiple games, is a guy who can dominate out the pen if you gave him the proper time to do so Exactly. Maybe had him, hey, every two games you're going to be in there. Every three games we're going to get you in there. Then we're going to want to see you back-to-back games. Bringing him in that type of position right there makes no sense because you wouldn't do that in playoff baseball, and they should be playing every game right now like it's playoff baseball. There's no argument. And they should be winning these games because the Oakland Athletics are about to have home field advantage if the Yankees don't step on that gas. And on top of that, the Yankees are terrible in Oakland. Exactly. So now, again, it's a one-game thing, so nobody knows what can happen. Nobody knows what can happen at Yankee Stadium. But I'll tell you what, me, along with you and everybody else, would very much like that game to take place at Yankee Stadium. Exactly, and Yankee Stadium is electric, judging by last season and in 2015. It just get, gets crazy. Home field advantage out there. Correct, and you probably have a good idea that Oakland may very well go to a bullpen game. Like they did the one game against the Yankees, and, and they're able to do that. It looks like a lot of teams – I don't know if a lot of teams are going to adapt it, but it's worked for Tampa Bay. I think in those one-game series, you may see a team like Oakland, you know, go out there and, and try to pin together a good bullpen strategy to really shut the Yankees down. So, I mean, they got a very good bullpen, a very good bullpen. Hard and the Yankees down. rely way too much on that home run ball. They do, no question about that. And, I mean – it's and just, they're going to play in it's, Oakland. It's so, very imagine, upsetting. so imagine that. Oakland is not even a home run hitting field. So just imagine Correct. That. Correct. That's right. And, I mean, the main concern for me, and, I, and, I, and again, I mean, and, again, I mean, I've been saying this since, what, June, when I, when I talked about that I feel like the Yankees are playing as a team expecting to win and not playing to win. You've seen it all year. Yeah. I mean, when, when have you seen real urgency in this club? When have you seen it and looked like, wow, they're really frustrated or they're really trying? Like, you watch this team play and you just say, oh, good, they had a good inning, they blew the team out the water, and they're pitching good today. Good, good win. But you exactly. never see them it, it, over the last month or so, just there's like a, there's a miss, there's something missing, put it that way. There's something and, missing. There's no yeah, fire. And, and to be honest stuff. with you, if, to be honest with you, like, um, I've never bashed Boone, but um, it, it's coming, like, the energy starts with him. And I see him just as sluggish. You know what I'm saying? Like, Correct. Well, like out of energy. Well, I was talking about it in my live chat the other day, too. Um, no, it does. You're, you're 100% right. It's, a lot of that starts with coaching. And exactly. then, you know, I was thinking about it, too. You know, Joe Girardi, of all people, Joe Girardi, the other day goes on an MLB network and goes flat out, this is what's wrong with Gary Sanchez. His base is wrong. He has no foundation. That's how you would fix him. The other day... All of a sudden, John Flaherty's talking about it on the Yes Network. And I'm yep. sitting back to myself and I'm saying, so nobody on the Yankees coaching staff recognized this? Insane. Has nobody brought this to his attention? Is it something that Gary Sanchez doesn't, doesn't want to change? Because it is obvious. If you watch it again and you, and you see it multiple times, 
he keeps his right leg out, meaning he gives himself a good gap between his legs that balls will get through, and it forces him to catch balls basically with dropping his glove down to try to smother the ball instead of falling on top of it, which is a normal catcher thing. But it's Obvious, kind of odd to see yeah. that Joe Girardi's the guy to call that out. Exactly. Obviously, the way Pena left, it's, it's obviously hurting the Yankees. Oh, I think they're missing him. I mean, I think they're missing him. And, and I'll tell you what, too, because one of the things you hear a lot about, like, for an example, I mean, I saw some Grand people. Salami, Grand Salami, Grand Salami. Sorry to interrupt you, but D.D. just went yard. Grand D.D. went yard, nice. So what is yeah. it now, 10 to 2? Let's see. No, 5 to 10. In, well, who in do you get? What do you Grand Slam? Innings. Yeah, yeah, Grand Slam. Grand Slam. Oh, wow. Okay, well, hey. I mean, it's nice. still in distance, six, six inning. Yeah, I mean, it's early, and I mean, they should be able to come back against a team like like the Twins. But I mean, the they should. They're, I mean, they should. The uh, Oakland Athletics are like, what, two and a half games behind the Yankees? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're they're right there. But even like I was saying yesterday, you know, Gary Sanchez hit the big home run, and you got people on Twitter just all, oh, um, this is what we've been waiting for, and everybody who's been knocking them this year, they're not real Yankee fans, blah, blah, exactly. blah. I mean, look, man, if you're going to give guys buys for hitting a home run in one game, and then not performing the next three or four games, it's not the way it works. And I'm not just knocking Gary, but this whole team hasn't played collectively. Yeah. You've talked about Stanton. Stanton has been a, yeah, has yeah. been a not a bust, but where where is he stepping up at? Exactly. My angle with uh, Gary Sanchez is that he's making about 600k per year, and then you have guys like Stanton. Obviously, he's about to start making 32 million dollars per year. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to have a DH that's making $32 million per year when you have all these guys making less than $1 million producing more than he is. Correct, correct. I mean, and the thing with Gary Sanchez is he's putting the, Yan- he's put the Yankees in a in somewhat of a, of a difficult spot because yeah. you, you can't, you know, you, you can't really deal him right now. Exactly. The Yankees need to upgrade, obviously, in defensively behind the plate. They, they, they are going to get a catcher this offseason. Oh, I think they have to. I mean, yeah. I, if it's me right now, I mean, again, we don't know all the ins and outs. We don't know everything that happens behind the scenes. Just but what the way. team, just it, just, out, way. it just doesn't feel like. It just doesn't feel like. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to make judgments up, but it doesn't seem like his heart's in the catching position. Exactly. Like he and, doesn't um, necessarily yeah. want to improve there. Yeah, and what I'm saying about Gary Sanchez is like. um I could see the Yankees like holding on to him or whatever, giving him chances, but I can't say the same thing for people that are making close to thirty-two million dollars per season. Yeah, so, and I mean, I mean that's the other the other thing too is that, and I, I brought up the idea that, and this is you know not known from anything. This was just an idea, pure straight from me, because I don't think I think Yankee fans are again forgetting that this is not the Yankees of of early two thousands where they would go out yeah. there and open up the checkbook. They're not that same team no more. Exactly. They're not willing to go out there and just blow everybody away. So when I talked about if the Yankees possibly get Machado, don't be shocked if they trade Didi because they're not looking to, to re-sign him long term. They're not going to look to give him, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen million a year like he wants. You know why? Because they got a guy at second base that can cover shortstop for six hundred thousand a year. Exactly. 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 And they and if they and you know they love Machado and Machado's younger than Didi. I think Machado. If, if I think if the Yankees go out and get any player, it's going to be Machado. I, I, yeah, awesome. I mean, I, I've, I, I yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, if you remember early in the off season, I said I, I didn't know if they would deal for him, but in the off season, I give it about an eighty percent chance, and I still feel that way. I, I really do. I think he likes the Yankees. I think the Yankees like him. You could do many different things with him. You could put him at short. You could put him at third. You can move some things around, and at the end of the day, likely it strengthens your team. Let's, so, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. There. Whatever Didi does in the playoffs, if he is so poor or doesn't perform, he's out of here. Yeah, and I mean, look, I'm not I'm not sitting here just saying, oh, I'm talking about trading Didi. Go trade him. He's not good. He's not this. But at the end of the day, I, I recognize how this team operates because you got to think yeah. about it now, for an example. Are you going to just let Didi play out his remaining season? Or are you going to deal him with this year, with a full year under him that another team can get a full year out of him? Or are you going to keep him, not re-sign him? Or I'll do you trade, trade him, him now when his team. value may be higher than it's ever been? Yeah, yeah. They can't wait with DD. I'll trade him this offseason. 
Yeah, because I mean, I've mean, i seen I've seen people say, I'll oh, lock him up long term. Didi's what, 29 or 30? Nah, what type of deal are you going to give him? Exactly. I mean, he's a good okay. clubhouse guy, but um, he, he gets on streaks. And, um, he is. He's not, he is. He's, not, he is. he's not worth it. He's not a long-time Yankee in my, my eyes. Exactly. But when it when it comes to a bat like a guy like Machado, when people are talking, too, about Machado now, oh, he's struggling in the National League. Look, it's a different league. He played in the AL East his entire career. A lot of guys take a while to adjust. You know, put him back in the AL East in these type of ballpark. You're going to see the same guy. Not even in exactly. The He's already but... proven that he could perform in the AL East. Of course, of course. And look at the numbers he's putting up. And he's what 26. I mean, exactly. you're talking about a guy that's entering the prime of his career. Exactly. And he wants to be a Yankee. And he wants to be a Yankee, which makes so it even let, better. So, so let's talk about Michael K. Michael K., you're killing me here. Michael K. shows love to all these bloggers, but not the notorious Salmonetti source. What's up with that? I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I'll be quite honest with you. I think I think one of the main problems with me is I'm just too real for him. Exactly. I'm just the too real. But look, at, I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I tend to want to keep my things more, you know, in my hands instead of broading yeah. out to, you know, all these other uh, Yes Network and things like that. At the end of the day, I mean, look, I'm not knocking Didn't they the put yes you network. there? Didn't they put you on the Yes Network recently? Yeah, yeah, for uh, for the McCutcheon trade, a little little snippet of it or whatever. But I'll tell you what, like, and, and I'm not even knocking the Yes Network, but I've lost a lot of respect for how a lot of these guys talk about this club. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm and I'm assuming. I mean, it's like I mean to be realistic. I mean to be honest, it's like Yankees fans wait for us to say what they're waiting for the Yes Network guys to say. Yeah, because I I, I really think they're just scared to talk the truth about things, and I mean they're scared that other Yankee fans are going to bully them or tell them that they're not real Yankee fans. The one guy told me I'm actually a, I'm actually a Mets fan or a Boston Red Sox fan. I just disguise <laughs> myself as a Yankee fan. <laughs> but so, seven eighty source the Mets fan. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how I do that, but apparently I do. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just funny, and I don't have. I think for both of us, you know, we don't have a filter of talking about what we believe and what we see and what we uh, what we feel is true. You know, and and I, I think the track record for the both of us is already there. So. You know, whatever whatever they want to do, let them do it. Like I said, we're doing our own thing, and and uh, I think most of the most of the most of the real smart Yankee fans understand who to go to. Exactly, and Yankee fans can check out the Sam and Eddie source when you're coming here next week. Uh the twenty second, two weeks. Exactly, and uh, where exactly are you going? You don't know yet. Uh no, I'm going back back home, back home to the to the good old BX. I uh, will be at likely likely I'll be at the 405 game on Saturday at home against Baltimore. Um, I wanna, was planning on do, being do you there. A, yeah, do you have a location set like to where you would like to meet Yankees fans? Oh no, not at all. I mean, I mean that can be set up pretty easily. Um, I don't have a location or anything like that set, but I'll, I'll be happy to obviously meet a lot of the the good Twitter fans that are out there in the world. You heard that, guys? You are going to meet the Sam and Eddie source, so get ready. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. You know, we might uh, we might shoot a little video out there also. Exactly, and um, for the Yankees fans that don't know, Peter is a rapper who makes music. Check out his uh, new mi- music video on the Sam and Eddie source channel. He's been on the radio, etc. He's just about to take over. Yeah, we got a got a lot of love on that one too. Um, not as many retweets as I wanted, but uh, you know what? One baby step at a time, and uh, and we will eventually get there. But um, it, it, team's frustrating, man. It's frustrating to watch. Yeah, there. Uh, I mean, people are complaining about Rothschild now. So, what do you think about Rothschild? I mean, I, I, God, I said it before. I mean, whoever is the infield instructor, whoever's catching, do, doing the helping Gary with his catching, uh, Marcus Timms, um, Rothschild, <laughs> they all got to go. I yeah, mean, let them yeah. go. Let them go. I mean, at the end of the day, who are the guys that Boone chose? You know, um, uh, uh, Nevin, uh, Nevin who, who's been good. I, I have no complaints. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, 
Nevin, uh, the be his bench coach, Bard. I mean, keep those guys, but let them build everybody else he wants. You know, if, if you're going to give a guy a team for three years, let him pick who he wants. Let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's tell Yankees fans to tweet Paul. What, what, what's his name? Rosenberg? What's his first name? Um. Oh, you're talking. Oh, man, I don't even know his first name. Paul I do Rosenberg, know his first not, not, not Paul. It's something else. Anyway, no. Rosenberg from the Yes Network. I mean, from uh, Michael K's radio show, Hot 97. Yeah, yeah. Um, not Mark, is it? <laughs> Man, we didn't even know his name. But anyways, Yankees fans. Dickie we're gonna have Smalls, Rosenberg. <laughs> we're going to have another contest, Yankees fans. We want you to tweet Rosenberg on Twitter. We want you to tweet Sam Manetti Sources' new video. To Rosenberg and whoever gets a response back or a retweet from him, will give you two hundred dollars. Even if he says it's the worst video and song he's ever heard in his life, you will still he, get two hundred dollars. Even though we don't know his first name from the top of our heads, you. Will oh man, what the hell is his name? Hold on, I'm gonna figure this out right now. Because I'm getting confused with the uh, Paul Rosenberg from uh, Eminem's album. Peter Rosenberg, that's his name. Peter Rosenberg, that's his name. Peter Rosenberg. Peter Rosenberg? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Peter, right? I don't know. <laughs> Peter Rosenberg. I don't know. Uh, uh, imagine a uh, follow us on YouTube and we're not even... Yeah, it's Peter Rosenberg. That's it is Peter Rosenberg? Yeah, I just looked Peter it up. Rosenberg. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. So, so Yankees fans, we exactly. We're going to have a fun little contest. Everybody tweet Sam and Eddie Source's new rap video. You can find it on his YouTube channel, the Sam and Eddie Source. Whoever gets a response from Peter Rosenberg, not a response where nobody could see it, if he re retweets it, you would get $200. Simple as that. Simple as that. And everybody Simple. says, like, oh, you know, um, uh, um, me, you guys, you, you guys know, I could care less. If um, if you comment a bad thing, a good thing, go comment, enjoy it, share it. It's meant to be out there for you all because, again, I'm coming to Yankee Stadium. We're going to have fun. We're going to take pictures together. We'll buy some drinks. We'll relax. We'll have a good time. But I want to um, have us all, you know, uh, get to know each other and, you know, keep building this thing from the ground up because at the end of the day, that's where it started on the ground. And we gotta just keep building it up. That's it. Exactly. Are you because those other bloggers, those other bloggers are fake. I mean, <laughs> just put it as simple as that. I'm not knocking exactly. any of them. I'm not gonna call out no I mean, names. Exactly. But They're let me tell you haters. something real quick. If I went ahead and put the Simonetti source on the Yes Network and copied their feed, guarantee you I'd probably be booted off Twitter. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Uh, the gifs, the animated gifs. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they do full clips. Exactly. And it has, I mean, like, that's the logo copy, on the bottom. That, exactly, exactly. That's copyright infringement. I mean, if me or you did it, we'll get booted off Twitter. I mean, Probably I just don't suit. understand how you get how anybody could get away with that. But you know what? Look, look. That's how they got built. Got, but but here's the thing, too. Anybody knows this about me. Go look at all my things. I've never, ever, ever just used Yankee things never, to build ever. up for Yankees. Seminary source did it from the ground up. I mean, I just talk. I talk, I talk about what I talk about. Simple as that. I never use video from the Yankees or anything like that. I just talk about it. You know, I put the camera up to my head and I talk. So I mean, <laughs> or or record what I'm saying. Simple as that. So just, just put it, it like is this. What it is. Um, yeah, just it put is it like what this. It is what it is. Yeah. It'll build up the the fans know who the real are. Uh, I'll, I'll just call him Little Max. If Little Max would put his face, his uh, voice on the <laughs> camera, I mean, he'll 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 be ran out of our town. Little Max, <laughs> little uh, oh, sleep man. deprived Max. So Sam and Eddie Source enjoyed talking to you. We will upload this on YouTube. Nice talking to you, man. All right, let's get it. All right, let's get it. All right, let's get it.